Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins for the intentions of all my relatives and friends and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of June, for migrants fleeing their homes. We pray that migrants fleeing from war or hunger, forced to undertake journeys full of danger and violence, find welcome and new opportunities in the countries that receive them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we enter in the presence of the Lord, as we begin this new day, let us take a few moments to thank the Lord for all that He has done for us. We see that right from the time of our birth till now, there have been many instances or events where the Lord has worked wonders in our lives. He has guided us, He has protected us, He has shown us the way, helped us to overcome challenges and difficulties. And in this way, we can identify Him guiding us all through our lives. But there are occasions wherein we find it difficult to recognize His presence among us. We find it difficult to identify the blessings and the graces. And here we see that it is in these occasions that we need to especially ask the Lord to give us the grace that we may be able to identify those graces, those blessings in our lives and therefore we see that the first thing to do is to be grateful to the Lord for all that he has done and therefore as we begin today's morning prayer let us begin on this note of gratitude let us ask the Lord to help us identify his presence in our lives and therefore, let us begin by thanking the Lord for all the things that He has done for us. Lord, we thank You for the gift of life. We thank You for giving us talents, opportunities and various gifts that enable us to become better persons and also that enable us to reach out to others and make a difference in the lives of others. Lord, we also want to thank you for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. We see that it is these people 
who have been instrumental in making us who we are. They are the ones who have devoted their time, energy and effort. And as a result of it, they have molded us and they have made us better individuals. So today, Lord, in a very special way, we ask you to bless all their endeavors and give them all the graces that they may require in life. We also thank you, Lord, for giving us the gift of this day, a day that would help us in many ways to appreciate the good things that you have done for us, a day wherein we may complete some thing that was left behind, or a day that may present to us various challenges. Whatever be the situation, Lord, we ask you to be with us and guide us. Allow us to be led by you. Lord, we also thank you for the opportunities, for the experiences that you have given us in life. There have been many experiences wherein we have enjoyed and these are the experiences that we want to cherish in life. But this, at the same time, there have also been those experiences and those moments wherein we have found it difficult to accept them. These are the experiences that have been learning experiences. They have taught us a lot in life. Though they may have been hard, bitter, but still they have given us a valuable lesson. They have made us stronger. And therefore, Lord, we also thank you for those moments which have helped us to become strong, which have helped us to become better individuals. And Lord, we also thank you for giving us opportunities to reach out to others, to make use of our talents. And thus, Lord, we ask you to be with us, guide us throughout this day. Lord, allow us to be led by you so that whatever we do, our actions, our words, may reflect your love, joy and mercy to the world around us. Help us to become your instruments so that you may work in and through us. And therefore now, my dear friends, let us all close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord that he has woken us up in this morning. We thank him for the good health that he has given us, for the good night's rest. We thank him for keeping us safe and sound, for protecting us from all danger, from all harm. He has kept us in his love. And at every moment we see that his gaze is upon us. He never abandons us. He is always there, guiding us, protecting us, showing us the right path. He loves us. And for all this, let us praise Him, let us thank Him, and let us glorify Him. Lord, as we offer you this day, we ask you that you be with us. Help us to make the right decisions. Help us to do the right things so that we too may become worthy instruments, that we may be worthy workers in your vineyard. And therefore, my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, let us now reflect and meditate on Psalm 65. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at a few verses in detail, trying to see how the psalm plays an important role in our lives. And therefore we see that Psalm 65 is in a way a psalm of praise that is attributed to David. It is a beautiful hymn that celebrates God's goodness and provision in the natural world. It also shows how God cares for his people. Now the psalm can be divided into three main sections. The first is an exaltation of God's character and praise for his acts. And that is something that we'll find in verses 1 to 4. Then in verses 5 to 8, we have the recognition of God's power and control over creation. And then in the final section from verses 9 to 13, 
we have gratitude for God's provision and blessings and a declaration of the psalmist response in worship. And therefore we see that this psalm in a way will motivate us to express our faith and trust in the Lord. Psalm 65 in a way is a profound expression of praise and gratitude for God's goodness and provision. It celebrates God's character and acknowledges his control over creation. In a way, we are all invited to give thanks to the Lord for the abundant blessings, for all the graces and gifts that he has showered on us. The psalm invites us to recognize God's handiwork in the natural world. It calls us to see God in creation, see God in the things around us and therefore to respond with joyful worship and gratitude. And therefore something when we look at creation, when we look at the things around us, can we thank the Lord for those things? Can we thank the Lord for the beautiful nature around us? And therefore, we see that Psalm 65 will be a reminder that God is indeed the source of all blessings. And therefore, it is our duty and our salvation to praise Him and give Him thanks. And now, having seen the general overview of the psalm, let us go and look at a few verses in detail. Now, verses 1 to 4 go like this. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion, and to you the vow shall be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me as for our transgressions. You will provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man you chose and caused to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. Now the psalm begins with a declaration of praise and recognition of God's presence in Zion. And in this way, the psalmist acknowledges that all flesh will come before God with all their prayers. That means all individuals, all people will go to the Lord with their prayers and the Lord will welcome them. He will willingly listen to all that they have to tell him. And therefore, this is a good reminder for us that when we find ourselves in difficult moments, we can approach the Lord, we can speak to Him, and He will be there to listen to all our prayers, to all our feelings, all our sentiments. And here we see that there is also an acknowledgement in this first part of the psalm of personal sins and the assurance of God's atonement. The Lord will forgive us. He will cleanse us of all our sins. And therefore we see that the psalmist here declares the blessedness of those chosen by God who are allowed to dwell in his presence and those who are allowed to experience his satisfaction and goodness. And thus we move to verses 5 and 8 which go like this. By awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation. You who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far off seas, who establish the mountains by strength, being clothed with power, who stills the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. In this section, we see that the psalmist praises God for his power and control over creation. The psalmist recognizes that God is indeed the source of salvation and therefore all of us need to place our confidence in the Lord. Place our faith and trust in him that he will guide us, he will protect us. And therefore the psalmist is very happy. He marvels at the ability of God to establish mountain, to still the raging waters and to cause many things in creation. He is also amazed that the Lord is able to calm down various tumults among the nations. Therefore, let us pray for peace at the same time. There are many parts of the world where 
Peace is the need of the hour. People fighting over one another, nations fighting with each other, people being affected, suffering. And therefore let us at this moment place all these events at the feet of the Lord. Because this part of the psalm tells us that even those in the farthest corners of the earth are in awe of God's sign. Therefore, nothing is impossible for God. Therefore, we need to go to Him with all our difficulties. And finally, we see that in verses 9 to 13, go like this. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows, you make it soft with showers, you bless its growth. And therefore we see that the psalmist expresses his gratitude for God's provision and blessings in the natural world. Therefore God's visitation upon the earth brings about abundance and it enriches the land and provides water and all the nutrients for growth. Therefore the psalmist acknowledges God's goodness that permeates the passing seasons and the overflowing abundance that results from it. And therefore we see that the imagery of pastures, valleys, flocks and grains depict a land that is bursting with life, therefore leading to joy and the songs of praise. And therefore we see that the psalmist will conclude with a final statement of the psalmist response to God's blessing. The psalmist declares that the blessing of God extend even to seemingly desolate places. That means no place is excluded from the presence of the Lord. The Lord is present everywhere. Nothing is impossible for God. And therefore it gives us confidence that we can turn to the Lord and ask him to intervene in whatever difficult situation we may be in. My dear friends, as we have reflected and meditated on Psalm 65, let us now spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on the psalm. There may be a few verses, a few thoughts that may have touched us. Remain with these thoughts. Allow these thoughts to take root in you so that ultimately you will be able to make this psalm personal. The psalm will take root in you. And therefore, as we spend these moments in silence, remain with the thought, remain with the verse so that ultimately your day may be enriched by the psalm. Whatever you do today may be in accordance to God's plan. And thus you will be able to become a worthy follower, a worthy citizen in the kingdom of God. Pray to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, of the heavenly hosts, 
by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen.